game is sold out. Over 42,000 expected. They love their Bulldogs here in Fresno. They're concerned about these three letters. DCS, 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 DCS. Fresno, the Fresno State Bulldogs, the feel-good story of this college football season. They hope that it has a storybook happy ending. They would like to end up in a BCS game. Tonight, they try to take another step in that direction as the Bulldogs of Fresno State take on the Boise State Broncos. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz, along with David Norrie, and welcome to Fresno. Every storybook ending is a happy ending. But you know what? For Fresno State, that almost didn't happen last week, David. At Colorado State, down by three, with 27 seconds left, they were on their own 20-yard line. What did we learn about David Carr, their quarterback, in those 27 seconds? Well, I think we found out that he's cold as ice. And with the BCS berth on the line, a Heisman Trophy campaign on the line, made three great plays, had to take his team 50 yards in those 27 seconds to set up a regulation tying field goal. Everybody knows that he's probably going to be the first pick in the NFL draft. He has all the intangibles, all the tools, and the physical skill box. David Carr is an absolute treat to watch play football, and we get to see him play again tonight. All right, but he's not the only guy on this Fresno State team, although if you read the headlines, he certainly is soaking up the attention. Paris Gaines is a very good tailback, and I think tonight he has a big night. Well, Paris Gaines is such a critical part of this offense. If they get success on the ground, it gives David Carr the chance to set up play action, and play action means big plays down the field to the wide receivers on the outside for David Carr. Everything is keyed off the running game here at Fresno State. Paris Gaines is a very good tailback for this bull Bulldog team. Everybody focuses on Fresno State's big wins in the preseason, and rightfully so, but now they get into the whack schedule they get a Boise State team that has the top rated passer in the whack that's right it's not David Carr it's Thank it's you. Mr. Dinwiddie here's a guy that nobody knows about but they probably should well Ryan Dinwiddie is the best quarterback in the country that you haven't heard of Believe me, this guy is a big-time passer. He's rated number four in the country right now. His last four games, he's the hottest quarterback in the country. He can make all the throws. He's got great arm strength. And if he gets time in the pocket, that's the key tonight. If he can get time to get the ball down the field, he's going to give Fresno State plenty of trouble. Ryan Didwitty in Boise State, David Carr in Fresno State. The Bulldogs, you'll get a chance to look at them coming up. Let's go to Reese Davis. Number 10 team, the Fresno State Bulldogs. Kenny G finishing off the national anthem. And he's got a team right now that is, certainly has their hands full in a Fresno State Bulldog team that have been extremely impressive. And I want to get your impressions on, on what Pat Hill had to say. Well, Pat Hill is, is definitely a guy who puts it on the line every week, and you see that from his non-conference schedule, the big wins on the road. He's put himself and his team in position to accomplish really the unthinkable. A BCS berth, he's got to jump up into one of those top six spots. I think if there's one area he has to be concerned about, it's the pollsters, how he's being voted. Right now, only 10th in the poll, and that may hurt him without a lot of quality opponents left on the schedule. Brett Vicentainer with the kick. David Michael on the return out to the 22-yard line. And let's get a look at a team that we haven't talked a lot about, the Boise State Broncos. Ryan Dinwiddie, he is just a sophomore. And as you mentioned, his numbers are pretty darn impressive. Fourth in the nation in pass efficiency right now. Boise State runs a multiple set. They'll run some two and some three receiver looks. They're running back Brock Forsey a tough guy. Matt Strophus the fullback. Fanuki is the deep threat. Jay Swilly a talented wide receiver and Jeb Putz here is a pretty good tight end. He's caught 17 balls this year. Dinwiddie. 
on the money. That's not a surprise. Matt Strophus with the catch, and it's a gain of about 10. Justin Johnson made the stop. The question is, can this offensive line protect Dinwiddie? Namus, Cheek, Huff, Vian, and Hill up front, and it's a good defensive line for Fresno State. Jake Probst, Alan Harper is an All-American candidate. Grant Harrington replaces Jason Stewart, and Nick Burley is the speed rusher on the outside. Second down short. Dinwiddie will put it up. Scrambling. He falls forward to the 35. He's got a first down, and flags are down. Jake Probst made the stop for Fresno State. You know, we talked at the top about the passing ability of Ryan Dinwiddie. He also is very good in the pocket, making the decision to pull it down and run for yards. And a nifty little move there to pick up the first down. Let's take a look at the flag. On the defense, five yards under run, first down. Rich Cullen, tonight's referee, a whack crew. If there's one chink in the armor, maybe it's penalties. The Bulldogs have accrued an awful lot of them so far and going to 6 and 0. So the Broncos have a first down at their own 40. And Brock Forzy slips and goes down at the 37 yard line. He'll lose three yards. The strength of this Fresno State defense up front and behind that front four. The linebackers are good. Mark Daly, Justin Johnson, and Maurice Rodriguez. Rodriguez is the big hitter. He's nursing a sore shoulder. Tyree Sams and Devon Banks on the outside with McGill and Fox, the hard-hitting safeties. And usually when those safeties hit you, they don't let you go. But last week they had trouble tackling against Colorado State. Forzy on it. No, it's Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie to the 45-yard line. How about that for a ball fake? 19 yards, Ryan Dinwiddie, the sophomore out of Elk Grove, California. And what sets this play up is a great sell on the fake. Watch the fake inside to Forsey. And the Fresno State defenders are buying it. And Dinwiddie, as we, we saw on the first, first down pickup, can move with his feet. He can hurt you with his feet. And they've opened up with a bit of two tight end as well, Rich. Just the type of thing that Colorado State had success with against Fresno State a week ago. First snap of three receiver look. Dinwiddie, and it's incomplete. He underthrew his receiver. He was looking for Lou Fanuki. Tyree Sams, the best cover man for the Bulldogs, on the coverage. The last week against Colorado State, this Fresno State defense going into that game, only giving up 91 yards per game on the ground. And the Rams posted over 300. And what they did is they lined up in two tight ends, and they decided to just pound the ball at Fresno State. Even though Fresno State likes to outnumber you up front, Colorado State did a great job making defenders miss. Shotgun blitz coming. Dinwiddie over the middle. Got a man. It's Tim Gilligan. 35-yard line. First down, Boise State. Gilligan down to the 32. It's a 12-yard pickup. Now, Dinwiddie has great feet in the pocket. He gets to his depth well, and he is one of the most accurate passers in college football. He's only a sophomore, but look at him drop the ball off. Not only completes the ball, but gives Gilligan a nice chance to move the ball upfield for additional yards. And that's a secret on crossing routes as a quarterback. Give your receiver the opportunity to make yards after the catch. First and 10. Forzy in motion. And he's down to the 27-yard line. Brock Forzy. He is sixth in the nation last year in all-purpose yardage. 83 yards a game on the ground. He catches it. He's a great blocker. He is indispensable, says Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator for Boise State. Well, he has to be indispensable tonight. If Boise State is going to win this football game, Dinwiddie has to get protection. And the big key there, get enough of a run game going to allow Dinwiddie some time in the pocket, both on dropbacks and in play-action situations. There's Forzy. 
to the 20 to the 18 he's got a first down and the Boise State Broncos have come into Fresno taken the opening kick and driven inside the red zone now Dan Hawkins team very well prepared they felt pretty confident that they could move the ball in this game and the Broncos getting a nice push up front they got a pretty talented offensive line. They felt good about the offensive line coming into the year. And people on the West Coast know that Broncos football has been very good offensively the last three years. Forzee to the 16-yard line. He is not afraid to put the head down. No, he's not a game breaker. He's not the type of guy that's going to take away angles from defensive backs. He's not a game breaker. But one thing he does do, he keeps those pads squared up. He's a downhill type runner. And he'll hit that hole like a sledgehammer. Very physical runner inside. And a very talented pass catcher as well coming out of the backfield. Second and eight. Forzy stopped at the 16 yard line. Mark Daly, the middle linebacker. Local kid out of Fresno. You hear so much about David Carr and the Fresno State offense in this undefeated season for Fresno State, but the defense, Rich, has been a big story as well. The tackling, especially out of the secondary, has been as good as I've seen at the college level in a long time. But last week against Colorado State, they did not do a good job. It's going to be interesting to see how they rebound tonight. 40% on the year, third and eight here. Blitz coming, Dinwiddie, 4G, getting outside, he's five, he's in! Touchdown, Ryan 16 Dinwiddie. yards and Boise State is on the board first. Ryan Dinwiddie with his 15th touchdown pass of the season. And for those of you that thought this was going to be a rollover, the Broncos trying to add the point. Nick Kalaikai adds the point, and Dan Hawkins Broncos make a statement, driving length of the field and leading number 10, Fresno State. Went back to the touchdown just a minute ago. Dinwiddie looking at a blitz by both linebackers and watch force. He escape out into the flat. Great timing by Dinwiddie to let the defenders come to him. Drops it off to Forsey. Look at the block at the top of the screen by Wingfield. He picks off two defenders and Forsey carries Fox into the end zone. Great job. Passing offense by the Boise State Broncos and you know, they've posted two bowl victories the last two years. We mentioned earlier, Rich, no secret, this team knows how to pass the football. Tyler Jones will kick it off for Boise State. 77 yards on the opening drive. Bernard Berrien from the seven. Berrien's got an, a lane, and he's caught from behind. <laughs> At the 40-yard line, good field position as if this guy really needs it. David Carr, the senior quarterback, 14 touchdowns, just two interceptions on the season. Last week, 27 of 38 was Carr in the win over Colorado State. He has lots of weapons. You start with Paris Gaines, the versatile running back, a three-receiver look with Charles Smith, Rodney Wright, Barry in the big play guy, and then Alec Greco at tight end. He's in for Jeremy Johnson, who was injured early in the season. Rodney Wright on a reverse, and Wright is out to the 46-yard line. The offensive line for Fresno State is very good, and only one senior, Logan Mankins, Rodney Michael, Mike Stovall is the senior in the middle, Fitu Tua, the guard, and Joe Shines in the tackle. Here's the defensive line for Boise State, and the question mark, at an average of 250, can Sky Dumont, Bobby Hammer, Dane Oldham, and Marcus Perkis stop the run from Fresno State? Inside screen, Rodney Wright. Wright is down to the 36-yard line. 
a lot of pressure on the back seven for Boise State starting with the linebackers. Greg Sasser is the senior Gary Mitchell and Chris Foster the secondary youth on the corners and that's never a good thing a redshirt freshman Gabriel Franklin Julius Brown a sophomore Travis Berger Quinton Michael are the safeties. Pitch to Paris Gaines. And Gaines is knocked out of bounds at the 33 yard line by Wes Nurse the sophomore safety out of Federal Way Washington. Yeah, and it's a tall order this evening for Boise State. They not only have to control this running game for Fresno State but they have to do it with seven defenders. And Boise State can't afford to have to get an extra safety into the picture because if you leave these wide receivers open man to man locked up one on one outside David Carr is going to absolutely pick you apart. Here's Gaines to the 20. Nurse made the stop. Fresno State is faster than Boise State and Fresno State is bigger than Boise State. That is a difficult combination when you're a defensive coordinator trying to stop this offense. Take a look at these numbers. Yeah, you look at Fresno State up front. They average over 305. That's, that's north of three bills across the offensive front. The defensive line under 250 average for Boise State. And then you look at the three linebackers for the Broncos. They only average 220. And again, they got to get it done with seven men in the box against this Fresno State rushing game. David Carr. And David Carr is inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Chris Foster made the stop. He is not exceptionally fast, but pro scouts really like the footwork of David Carr. Well, the difference between an exceptional passer and an exceptional quarterback is the ability to move in the pocket, mobility, and also the gift of picking up yards on the run. And David Carr is a sub 4-7 guy. That's what NFL scouts love about him. He moves so well with his feet in addition to his passing skills. Carr to the air on second and four, lobbing it up. Greco, touchdown! Greco, the sophomore tight end. And the Bulldogs with the point can tie this thing up. Asen Asparuha, the junior out of Bulgaria. And Asparuha, who was the hero last week, along with David Carr, ties the game at seven. The Broncos scored when they had it. The Bulldogs have scored the only time they've had it. And early on, we are tied at seven. of passage at Texas A&M. A season of college football from the sidelines. Thursday at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific on ESPN. It didn't take long for David Carr and the Broncos, or rather David Carr and the Bulldogs to answer the Broncos. 19 yards to Alec Greco. Six plays and 60 yards. He was two of two for 38 yards. Greco the sophomore. Boy, he replaced a good tight end in Jeremy Johnson. They lost him in that Wisconsin game. Yeah, Johnson was a special athlete, but Greco has stepped up, had a key touchdown last week up at Fort Collins. Brett Vicentainer, the kick. David Michael fumbles it, and he'll go to a knee. 
And it will come out to the 20 yard line. Another look at the touchdown. Well, Alec Greco is going to line up outside at H back. And this is Quentin Michael, the best cover man for Boise State. Watch Greco sneak out of the backfield here. And the difference is the throw by Carr. This is a beautiful ball. And watch the separation right at the end by Greco. A nice job of getting that right foot down in bounds. One more look, and you'll see a nifty play by Greco getting that right cleat inside the sideline. And one more touchdown pass in the basket for David Carr. Forzi slices across to the 23 yard line. Tomorrow morning, the only way to start your college football Saturday is with College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Chris, Lee, and Kirk, 90 minutes worth, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. It's tomorrow right here on ESPN. Boise State's defense on their heels on that first drive. Ryan Dinwiddie on second and six. In a crowd, and it's incomplete. Jeb Putz here was the intended receiver. Maurice Rodriguez on the coverage. Now, football coaches love to study game film, and they like to look and go to things that are successful against the teams that they're working against. Last week, Colorado State, to get a look at Maurice Rodriguez, Rodriguez, the team leader in tackles. But last week, Colorado State had a lot of success running the ball out of two tight ends. Boise State shows up, two tight end offense, the first two possessions. Third down swing pass, Forzi. Oh. Sandwich between Mark Daly and Alan Harper. Wow. Hey, you come up to a game in Fresno, and one thing you're going to hear on field level is the sound of helmets popping. This is a team that will come up and absolutely smack you. The linebackers are hard hitters, but the secondary players, especially the safeties, play like linebackers. And you have to secure the football against this Fresno State defense. They will come up, and they will lay the wood to you. Bernard Berrien at his own 31. Keith Shuttler, a low-line drive. And that is a great kick away from a dangerous return man with Bernard Berrien. Last week, Fresno State's BCS hopes were down to 27 seconds. That's when David Carr took over. Yeah, he had three plays to go 49 yards. The opening play, a little middle screen to Paris Gaines. Watch this play by Gaines to get out of bounds. Not only picking up the first down, but getting out of bounds. And then the scrambling ability of David Carr. Beautiful ball to the outside. And Rodney Wright, two consecutive catches. That was an audible, the third play. Beautiful decision making by David Carr to put Asperu up in position to tie the game with the 48 yarder. They go on to win it in overtime and David Carr right there jumped up into my number one slot for the Heisman Trophy. Carr going deep, Berrien. It is picked off, intercepted by Gabriel Franklin. A red shirt freshman steps in front of Berrien and intercepts David Carr for only the third time this year. There's a flag down back at the 20-yard line. Well, they might have roughed David Carr because the offensive unit for Fresno State is staying on the field. What a play by Franklin. Roughing the quarterback on the defense. First down. Well, that penalty takes away one of the best plays you'll see all year by a defensive back in college football. And Gabe Franklin, number 16, he's a true freshman. <laughs> Working against Berrien on the outside man-to-man -man on a post route and probably the best quarterback in college football in the last four or five years. What a play to make the interception, but it's all for naught. Mental lapse by the Broncos, and Fresno State retains possession. And in first and ten games, Good hit by LeGarry Mitchell, the middle linebacker. The car's looking down the middle of the field on the post, and he lets it go, and, well, I'll tell you what, Flag has to stay in the pocket on that one. I mean, this is college football. He, I mean, he, he was holding up when he hit him. Uh, that, that, to me, takes away a great 
play by Boise State. Fresno State got a huge break there. Second down, 10. Card of the air again. On the money to Rodney Wright. Right on the sticks at the 48-yard line. Gabriel Franklin made the stop. Our aerial shots provided by the Monster.com blimp. High above Fresno, California. Our thanks to the folks at Monster.com. And a look into Bulldog Stadium. It seats 42,000, but there's a lot of talk of expanding this thing up over 60,000. Well, they have the fan interest generated to go ahead and expand it to 70 if they want to. This, this fan base here in the San Joaquin Valley has been terrific this year. Gaines picks up the first down. He's inside Boise State territory to the 48-yard line. Yeah, so much talk about David Carr and his NFL prospects. A lot of people thinking he's going to be the number one pick in the draft. He is an absolute dream for scouts when he gets that NFL combine. Sub 4-7 time, benches 390 pounds, squats 500. I mean, he has all the tools. Quick screen. And it's Charles Smith, Smith with the to the 40-yard line. Carr Let's check in with Alex Flanagan. Talking, you guys talking about David Carr being a number one draft pick. Um, a lot of other people obviously are thinking that too. Daniel Snyder, owner of the Washington Redskins, visited Colorado State last week, took his personal jet there to personally scout David Carr. And the week before that, uh, Chris Palmer, and Charlie Casserly came from the Houston Texans. And of course, as you guys know, they have the number one draft pick this year, Rich. Well, there's another n number one, not number one overall, but another first round draft pick who played quarterback here at Fresno State that is very high on him as well as flags go down. Trent Dilfer still lives in Fresno, and he and Carr work out in the offseason. And he's really high on, on this kid Carr as well. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yards, the down will still be two. And you mentioned, Rich, that Trent Dilfer's going to be joining us. He had a real interesting comment a couple weeks ago. He said, David Carr is making throws right now that are as good as only a handful of quarterbacks in the NFL. And that says a lot coming from Trent Dilfer, a guy who's got a Super Bowl ring now under his belt. Second and eight. Here comes a blitz from Boise State. And they got a piece of the ball or of Carr. Trent Dilfer played for Jim Sweeney. There he is in the, the blue hat. He'll be making his way up here in the third quarter. The Seahawks have a bye this week. He lost his starting job. He was 2-0 and as a starter, and, and Mike Holmgren's going back to Matt Hasselbeck. We'll ask Dilfer about that. Dilfer was in complete. He had no problem with that. He said, that's not a problem. I, he said, a quarterback should not lose his job due to injury. Now he's won 13 games in a row as a starter 13 and 0 in his last 13 games oh what a throw by Carr to the 26 yard line Charles Smith the catch and most quarterbacks at the college and pro level are below average passers on the run and this is a real strength that David Carr he takes a bit of a hit there on the delivery but watch the throw back against the grain and not only is it accurate he puts enough mustard on the ball to get it there in time, and Smith's sitting down in a little void in the defense. What a beautiful ball from David Carr. 5 for 6 so far as Carr. Inside screen, Rodney Wright, and the Broncos defend it well to the 23-yard line, gain of 3 yards. Fresno State likes to run that wide receiver smash screen, and they'll run it and run it and run it until you prove you can defense it. Taking a look at Rodney Wright's numbers. He's had a big, big part in the offensive fireworks over the course of this season. And our Bronco State defensive coordinator Bob Gregory said, most teams in the WAC have one great receiver. Fresno State has three of them. And that's what makes it so tough to defense David Carr. Wright may throw it. He does. Into a crowd. And it is almost caught by Berrien. 
it's incomplete. That went from completion to almost interception to almost touchdown. Now, Wes Nurse, number 21, was on the scene, and I think Gabriel Franklin had another shot at an interception. And a low angle look there, and watch Barry and try to oh. secure the football just before it gets to the turf. Definitely an incompletion, but a nice effort by number two in the end zone. Third down and seven. Boise State, Fresno State. Carr again on the run, and again on the money to Bernard Berrien. At the six-yard line. Now David Carr is getting a lot of notoriety. He's being marketed very well, but none of it is hype. I mean, this is another NFL caliber ball. Delivered a little bit high, but still a beautiful throw. And Berrien... Doing a nice job of making his quarterback look good. Not one, but two inbounds. Of course, in college, you only need one foot down. And Fresno State, first and goal. Carr could keep it, and he's dropped. David Carr. At the eight-yard line, Dane Oldham, the sophomore out of San Diego for Boise State. Now, the Broncos told us, Bob Gregory, their defensive coordinator, said, we must keep David Carr in front of us. We can give up the 10 to 12 yarders, just not the 20 to 25 yarders. And that's what Colorado State did last week. They they took away the running game a bit. Granted, Paris Gaines did go over 100 yards, but Colorado State did a great job of making David Carr stay patient, making him hit balls underneath the safeties. On the money to Rodney Ryan, touchdown. The throws he made on that drive made that fade seem rather pedestrian. Well, and the fade is the biggest one-on-one -on -one ball that you're going to see down near the goal line. And, and I'm talking about Sundays. And he throws the fade ball as well as Troy Aikman coming out in 1988 when he's the first pick in the draft for the Cowboys. And how about the two throws on the run on that drive going to his right? Absolutely unbelievable, the throwing talent of this kid, number eight, David Carr. Asperuhoff adds the point. David Carr is on display tonight for all of America to see, and so far, he is shining bright. College Football Saturday at noon on ESPN in a huge Big Ten matchup. Anthony Davis and the Badgers try to hold off Big Ten passer Kurt Kittner and the Fighting Illini. At noon on ESPN2, linebacker Julius Peppers powers UNC in the battle against Heisman hopeful Woodrow Dantzler and Clemson. Wisconsin, Illinois at noon on ESPN. North Carolina, Clemson at noon on ESPN2. It all starts on ESPN at 10.30 Eastern with College Game Day, Saturday. Bulldogs of Fresno State, number 10 in the country, on top of Boise State. Rodney Wright, the recipient of that David Carr touchdown pass. Carr has thrown two touchdowns. He is 8 of 9 for 104 yards on two drives. David Michael from the 10. And Michael is out to the 27-yard line. Well, it used to be that in the ACC, everyone knew it was Florida State. Through the years, they've dominated that conference. Saturday, number 22, Florida State against Virginia, and they're fighting now for the top spot in the ACC. That ACC title obviously in doubt. And go back to 95 when the Cavs handed the Seminoles their first of three ACC losses since joining the league. 7.45 Eastern on ESPN. The Virginia team is a much improved team. Al Groh at the helm but a big win against Clemson on the road a few weeks back on first and ten Ryan Dinwiddie oh that looked like an early hit Jeb puts here the tight end 
was leveled by Justin Johnson just as the ball arrived. I think you had it right there the first time, Rich. Jeff didn't have a chance here because Johnson's going to arrive before the football. And he not only arrives before the football, he makes Jeb pay for it. That's a situation right there where Boise State should have had a first down. Dinwiddie stepping up in traffic. Has his man. Kevin Lausma, the sophomore, a five-yard pickup. Orion Dinwiddie, this is an exceptional for play for a young quarterback. Watch how he waits, he waits, doesn't get nervous feet. And he's extremely poised and calm in the pocket. Even with the blitzes and the, the pass rushers closing in around him, he's not going to escape the pocket until it's time. And a nice job of feeding the ball out at the last second. Third down. Dinwiddie going to go deep and he overthrows Jay Swilly. Kendall Edwards on the coverage. Well, he had Swilly. This was a difficult throw. And if Dinwiddie keeps this ball in bounds, I think he has a hookup. Swilly gave up on the route a little bit. You got to keep your deep speed there, keep your feet moving, and Swilly geared down. And that also added to the overthrow. Shuttler had a 49-yarder and kept it away, importantly, from Berrien in his first kick. And this time he goes to the other sideline and keeps it way away from Berrien. Too much so that it's going to cost them a good 15 yards. They'll mark this ball. Right about the 45 yard line. Ouch. And Dan Hawkins is lecturing his young punter. That's yeah, tough because you give David Carr a short field to work with, and it just increases the pressure on your defense. And this is such a young defense, especially in the linebacking core, the secondary. You don't want Fresno State having to go short distances to put points on the board. Carr right back to work. Wide open. Dropped. Rodney Wright. Quentin Michael, the closest Bronco to him, he, he wasn't very close. David Carr took a big hit on this throw, but once again, he's throwing from the right hash about a 25, 30-yard ball to the outside on the left sideline and absolutely puts the ball there on a string. It's, I'll tell you what, Rich, it is really enjoyable to watch this kid play quarterback because of all the kinds of throws that he can make down the field. Harris Gaines bounces outside. And it's knocked out of bounds at the 47-yard line. It's a gain of eight. Now, Paris Gaines, they feel that he's just getting back, as we said, from that ACL in the 1999 Las Vegas Bowl. Pretty disappointing year a year ago. Less than 400 yards on the ground, and he's coming off back-to-back 100-plus -back games. In fact, he went over the 200-yard mark against Louisiana Tech three weeks ago. And he combines a lot of power between the tackles as well as that newly regained speed. And he's a threat to take it all the way to the house when he touches the football out of the backfield. Third down short. Carr on the out. Has Berrien. And he steps out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Rodney Wright, Marque Davis, of course, a wide receiver out tonight, Charles Smith, Bernard Berrien. This is a great group of wide receivers to go to for a quarterback. And Bernard Berrien, number two, what a game he had in Madison, Wisconsin, earlier this year. 300 all-purpose yards. This team was trailing by 10 at halftime. He opened up the second half against 
That Wisconsin team with a 96-yard touchdown on a kickoff return. Really a big boost in that game. Gaines has a lot of room, and he's inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Wes Nurse made the stop. And we talked about the most important key for the Boise State defense is to not let Gaines get his feet and get going in the rushing game. And it looks like the offensive front for Fresno State is starting to exert itself up front. 118 yards last week against Colorado State. And the final seconds of this first quarter evaporating in Fresno. Pat Hill and the Bulldogs on top of Dan Hawkins and the Broncos. Back to Fresno as it has been all year long. On the, Bron on the, the Bulldogs, the number one team in the WAC right now and the number 10 team in the country. On the move, Boise State 27, Carr a quick strike, Rodney Wright at the 19. Our ESPN game track from the first quarter. In fact, first possession, Boise State drove 77 yards. And Ryan Dinwiddie hit Brock Forsey on a 16-yard touchdown. Broncos had a 7-0 lead. From that point, it was all David Carr. Yeah, you get a look at David Carr sitting in the shotgun. Great throw back against the green to Smith for the first down. Game tied at 7. And a perfect fade ball to right to give the Bulldogs a lead, 14-7. Gaines gets outside to the 15, and he's got a first down. Most of the time with a team like Fresno State and a player like David Carr, the questions would arise, well, yeah, but he's doing it in the whack. But with the schedule that Fresno State started with at Colorado, number 10, Oregon State, at number 23, Wisconsin, a road game at Colorado State, he has shined in all four of those big games. Uh, he, he's proven that he can do it against all ranges of competition. Gains to the 15. The focus has been on the BCS. Pre-game, Reese Davis, Mark May, and Rod Gilmore were also talking Heisman Trophy. What are your thoughts on Heisman Trophy and David Carr? After that comeback last week and, and the way that David Carr set up that drive, the final three plays and the tying field goal, he's my number one choice right now. Woodrow Dantzler right up there. And I like Deshaun Foster at UCLA after the 301-yard effort last week against the University of Washington. That throw was batted down. Andy Avalos, a redshirt freshman out of Corona, California. Got a hand on it. Boise State really needs a stop. Dan Hawkins said he, he wasn't that, that. Obviously, he said Fresno State is great, but we can't be concerned about them. We have to do what we do well. And he said that's not what we did on the road at South Carolina or on the road against Washington State. Well, they did go into a hostile environment against that Lou Holtz team, South Carolina. So this is not uncharted territory but this defense is going to have to come up with some turnovers very tough to do against david carr he does not turn the ball over much have yet to stop fresno on third down at the six yard line barion is very close and i think they're going to mark him just short and the decision coming up for pat hill here most likely Fourth down, and Fresno State's going to go for it. And I think it's a pretty good decision here. The offensive line starting to have some success. Clock running down there, the game clock. David Carr's going to take a timeout. Pat Hill wants to go for it. He'll talk it over with David Carr. We'll return to Fresno. Seven, Fresno State on top. Fourth and inches at the five. David Knorr, you sneak it here? Well, you can sneak it. You can give it to Gaines. And also, tremendous confidence in Carr. So, they go ahead and call Carr's number. And he does have the first down. But in those situations, Pat Hill, known as a bit of a gambler. And he 
won't hesitate along with his offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig. They'll talk it over in the silent. They won't hesitate to go play action because they know if David Carr has any room, he's going to fit that ball in. So now four shots seemingly from the four. Paris Gaines, Paris Gaines, touchdown, Fresno State. their lead to 20 to 7. So he missed it. Paris Gaines. Don't forget about Paris. 20 to 7, Fresno State. I am Jeff Kent. Best way to start your college football Saturday, college game day tomorrow morning. Chris, Kirk, and Lee, 10:30 Eastern, 7:30 a.m. Pacific Saturday. Tomorrow morning on ESPN, every Saturday, presented by the Discover Car. And certainly they will be talking about the Fresno State Bulldogs. Brock Forsey is going to bring it out to the 18-yard line. And when you talk about Fresno State and BCS, you talk about the top 10 and quality wins, all right? Mr. Nori, accompany me through this tour here. You got Miami, who, who beat number 13, Florida State. Oklahoma has a couple of them. Nebraska. Virginia Tech doesn't have a, a top 10 quality win yet. Yeah, you look at the top five in Oklahoma, in my mind, I think they deserve to be the number one team, especially coming off the national championship. And Virginia Tech, I, I'm wondering why the pollsters are voting Virginia Tech so high and Fresno State relatively low when you look at the schedule strength. Fresno State is number 10 in the ESPN USA Today coaches poll. All right, and then our next two, UCLA has a ton of them, and the Bruins, the computers like the Bruins, and everyone feels that with the BCS, when it comes out on Monday, our Brad Edwards at UCLA thinks that UCLA is going to be right up there in that, uh, in the one-two spot. He's got UCLA number two. And then down to Fresno State. On the road at Colorado, Colorado is back in the top 25. Oregon State was number 12 when they beat them. Wisconsin was number 23. I think Fresno State deserves to be up in that 6-7 range. And, and that may be a problem, as we said earlier, Rich. This Fresno State team does not have a lot of opportunities, maybe not any more opportunities the rest of the way to move up prior to their bowl game and that could hurt them they need to be in one of those top six slots to jump into the BCS and I frankly believe that Pat Hill if any other team in the top 10 had played the type of non-conference schedule that Fresno State has played they definitely be in the top three Dinwiddie Brian Dinwiddie gonna go deep Lou Fanuki is there and he can't hold on That was not a bad throw. Bryce McGill on the coverage. Yeah, Fanuki had split the safeties. Bryce McGill and Cameron Worrell. And this is a pretty nicely thrown ball. Now, Fanuki, mm, it's like a great effort laying out there. If he could just keep that deep speed one more half step. You know, it's tough as a wide receiver with the ball in the air to not gear down a little bit and, and to not keep that deep speed going. And narrow miss there in the passing game for Boise State. Forzi on a draw, tripped up and at the 34-yard line. We told you Brad Edwards here at ESPN is the official BCS guru. He ran the numbers and simulated the BCS 
games through October 13th. He has Oklahoma 1, UCLA 2, Nebraska, Oregon, Miami, Virginia Tech, and then Fresno State at number 7. And I think this is pretty, I think this list right here is pretty accurate with the exception of Virginia Tech. I am not a big fan of Virginia Tech, at least yet. I want to see more, and it'll have to come against Miami. They just do not have a top-notch schedule this year. Third down eight. Dinwood is in trouble. And he'll go down. Juan Batista will get credit for the sack along with Brian Morris. And that's the problem when you go up against a David Carr-led offense. Fresno State, with the explosiveness that they have as an offensive team, you have to match them possession for possession. And Dan Hawkins, the head coach for Boise State, knows that. And every time you punt the ball back to Fresno State, you lose a little bit of position in a football game. And this one, Boise State's got to be careful. They can't let this game get away from them. Shuttler just got that kick off, and it rolls out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. Tomorrow on ESPN, Big Ten football, Wisconsin and Illinois. Both teams with only a loss in the conference. Anthony Davis and the Badgers against Kurt Kittner and the Fighting Illini. Noon Eastern on ESPN. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen, Dave Ryan will be there in Champaign. That, that equates to an early Big Ten elimination game. Whoever comes up with a second loss there, not a great shot at winning the Big Ten title. Paris gains out to the 36-yard line. Dinwiddie is just a sophomore. Bart Hendricks was such a wonderful quarterback at, at Boise State the last couple of seasons. Took them to two humanitarian bowl wins. And Dinwiddie has stepped in, into his shoes and has played very well. I think Dinwiddie will make some people forget about Bart Hendricks and not take anything away from Bart. Bart was in camp with the San Diego Chargers, made it to the 60-man cut. Terrific player, but I think Dinwiddie may be a quarterback that does move on to that next level and sticks. Movement and flags. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yards, previous spot, the down is still two. In talking about his quarterback, Ryan Dinwiddie, Dan Hawkins, the, the head coach for Boise State, said one of the things Ryan has to face that we all have to face is we're stepping up in conferences. They went from the Big West up to the WAC, and the level of competition, they upgraded their non-conference schedule. They went on the road to face South Carolina and on the road to face Washington State, two top 25 programs. And here they are on the road facing the number 10 team in the country in Fresno State. Mike Phillips made the stop on Paris Gaines. Now stepping up from the Big West to a mid-major like the WAC Conference, I think that Dan Hawkins' team, and of course Dirk Cutter was heading the ship a year ago, I think Boise State proved a little something by beating UTEP in the bowl game, uh, the co-champion in the WAC a year ago. And even before they joined the WAC this year, they served notice that, that they would be competing for a championship. Third down now, Carr. Oh, big hit, and it's intercepted. Chris Foster has the loose football. Boise State said to, to stay in this football game, they needed a few breaks. All of the breaks have gone against them until this one. Yeah, they need a few hits, and I, I Boise State got a hit from Wes Nurse, I believe, here, number 21. This is a nice play on the ball. That is West Nurse, number 21, and he arrives, times it perfectly, and Chris Foster comes up with a deflection. And that's the second interception of the night for David Carr. Remember, the first one was wiped off the board on a roughing the quarterback call, but... That kind of evens things out, doesn't it? Because the, the first one was a, a flag that never should have been thrown. He wasn't charged for the interception. That was a ball that should have been caught. He is charged for the interception. And Dinwiddie steps up, and he sacks the 47-yard line, Nick Burley. Oh, 
25 sacks now on the season for this Fresno State defense. And Fresno State, the pressure can come from anywhere. You got Burley playing defensive end. You got Harper, maybe one of the top two or three defensive tackles in the country. And then all sorts of pressure from the secondary that you can utilize in your blitz package. Dinwiddie to Billy Wingfield. And it's incomplete. Tyree Sams on the coverage. You see a pattern like that, and Dinwiddie came up short, and you almost take it for granted because Carr was making those throws and has made those throws all season. That's a difficult throw for a quarterback. Yeah, it is a difficult throw, and Chris Carr trying to get his bearings together on the sideline. He's a very composed quarterback. Only his third interception on the year. And a big play coming up for his counterpart, Dinwiddie. Boise State, just one of four on third down. Dinwiddie in and out of the hands of the tight end, and it's intercepted by Sam Williams. Jeb Putz here was the intended receiver. Well, David Carr had an interception on a ball that should have been caught by his receiver. And this is a ball that should have been caught by Putzier. Putzier is a former wide receiver. In fact, two-time Big West All-Conference honors. That was a nice play by Dinwiddie to put a little air under the ball, a little touch. And Putzier looked like he was concentrating on the tacklers upfield before he secured the football. Gaines right back to work. To the 42, gain of five. Well, Boise State to come in and come up with an upset in this football game had to play almost perfect football in the turnover department great execution in the passing game they've had a couple of miscues in special teams short punts and Dan Hawkins knows that the blueprint for victory here in Fresno can't come quite this way Greco in motion, Gaines runs right into the tackle, into the arms of Mike Phillips, senior out of Castroville. Boise State has an awful lot of California talent on their roster, and there are a lot of guys that have come from this Central Valley in the Sacramento area. Well, that was a tackle. It looked like Phillips was the one who took the brunt of the collision, but Gaines slow getting up. Taking a look at the replay, Gaines is going to go ahead and drive Phillips right onto his back. Watch 54. That's Ooh. a tackle that you can figure it's going to hurt the linebacker a little bit more than the running back. But you can see the knee tweak just a little bit on the collision. But he's up and moving. That's great news for the Bulldogs and for Paris Gaines. Well, oftentimes that's the case in football. It's not always the, the big hits where you see the injuries, but the awkward hits. And Paris Gaines going to the turf sideways looks like he'll return Josh Levi replaces him on third and five car <laughs> no way no it's incomplete I thought for a second it was a completion car threw it about the only place it could be completed now with the naked eye, it looks like this ball takes a hop before Smith can bring it in. Working in the zone. I don't know. His hands. The question is whether he gets his hands under the between ball. the turf and the football. Yeah, because the ball popped up. Whether it popped up off the ground or his hands was the question. Simpson the punt. Oh! Flag is down. And you know what? That is the same hit. Kendall Edwards with the hit. David Norrie, that's the same hit that knocked an Oregon State player out with a broken arm. And I know it's only a 15-yard penalty. That should be a 15-yard penalty and an ejection. I agree with you 100%. They need to change that rule. Now, Edwards should be thrown out of the football game. Absolutely. And he knocked... 
an Oregon State cornerback out for a number of games and potentially the season with a hit back in the second game of the season. And this was even more violent. And there is no place for this. Dan Hawkins, if he doesn't get an injection here, it's the wrong call. You saw Pat Hill get in Edwards' face. But I'll tell you what, it's a, there's been a debate about this this year. And if, and if there's ever a need for an ejection, it's right here. Now, Fresno State doesn't need that. That's not good PR. Interference with the opportunity to make the catch with contact. We've ejected the player for the offense. First down. And that is absolutely the right call. And I think Pat Hill would agree with it. Now, Rich Collin, the referee, was right on top of that, and he took appropriate action. I mean, this is... This isn't even close. No, that, that is incredibly dangerous is what it is. I mean, there, there's enough serious injuries in college football that you can't risk having one of these plays during a season in any football game. I mean, he lays his helmet right on the Adams apple oh, of Gilligan. Man. And it's exposed and all. That, that... How about Gilligan with the toughness to get up after that hit and get to the sideline? I mean, they're looking at his jaw. They're checking him for a concussion. That is absolutely wrong by Edwards. And, you know, I think, I think the conference and maybe the NCAA should look at potentially more than just an ejection in the football game. And they may have to, you know, set, set the tone, Rich, and, and, and make him sit out some additional football. That's how violent that hit was. Dennis Erickson was very vocal about it when Oregon State was in here. He lost a, a player, and Hawkins and the Boise State sideline nearly, <laughs> they exploded when they saw that. Now Dan Hawkins, you know, he deserves to be hot after that one. Let's see how Boise State reacts now with six minutes left. Fresno State seemingly in control of this game. And Forzy fights his way to the 32. It's a gain of two. Now with less than six minutes to go here as you take another look at Gilligan. And Gilligan, you can see him shaking his head there. I mean, I, up here. I'm breathing a sigh of relief that he's okay. That was that was a situation where that could have been a very serious injury. And now Boise State has to compose themselves. Now they're down 13 points. If they can put some points on the board here before halftime, they're in this football game. Dinwiddie on the throw is incomplete. Lou Fanuki was the intended receiver. We told you that against Oregon State, Edwards made a similar hit. And that hit broke the wrists of that receiver. He was flagged only 15 yards on that play. There was no ejection. But Dennis Erickson was livid in his Monday press conference, and rightfully so. Third down, blitz coming. Dinwiddie stands tall and hits his man. It's Swilly right at midfield out to the 47-yard line. Devon Banks on the coverage, 21 yards. Ryan Dinwiddie has made the throws today. He hasn't had a lot of help from his receivers. If there's any question about Dinwiddie's arm strength, take a look at the skinny post. And he's sitting out of the shotgun, so he's a little deeper in the pocket. And Wingfield, that wasn't a perfectly delivered ball. A little bit behind Wingfield. A nice job by Wingfield to gear down. Wingfield's been a little bit inconsistent. He may be the most talented wide receiver on the outside for Boise State, but he's had some drops in him. Nice hookup on that last pick. Two tight end look on first and ten. And the Broncos... A big play by Nick Burley from Fresno State. David Michael, his first carry. Nick Burley is a guy that is moving up on NFL draft boards. Harper, Only a junior, but he looks a little bit like Javon Kirst, doesn't he? His frame. That Harper gets the headlines on that defensive line. But you really like Nick Burley. I like Nick Burley because he's got the tremendous speed that you need to be a dominant pass rusher. 
No flags, and Wingfield makes the catch, and he's inside the 40-yard line. I think everybody was expecting some flags and whistles, and the play went on. Uh, looked like number 94, Harrington gets into the neutral zone here on the snap of the ball, and that's definitely offsides. The officiating crew missed that one. He was almost helmet to helmet with Scott Huff, the center for Boise State. Third and five. Dinwiddie inside screen. Fanuki. Fanuki to the 30. And he's down to the 26. Boise State has a first down. Devon Banks finally brought him down. And the Broncos giving Fresno State a dose of their own medicine. That inside wide receiver screen, the smash screen. Fresno State loves to run it on offense, and this time Fanuki comes inside, picks up some of his offensive line as they release downfield, and again, a nicely thrown ball by Dinwiddie. This time, flags. This might be another offside penalty against Fresno State. Dinwiddie trying to use his cadence. Offside. Offside. That's a nice job by Ryan Dinwiddie. As a quarterback, you got to help out your offensive line. You got to realize. And, and recognize when the defensive line is trying to get a jump on your snap count. And two out of the last three plays, Dinwiddie has used his cadence. Look at here, the hard count brings not one, but about three defenders into the neutral zone. Sam Huff, a nice job again to snapping the ball to bring that five-yard penalty. Fanuki in motion, pitch to Forzy, and down he goes. Great play by Devon Banks. And Devon Banks coming up out of the secondary to force Forzy on an inside track. And this Fresno State secondary has really made a name for themselves over the course of the 2001 season by being aggressive tacklers, blitzers. They'll come up and they'll introduce themselves in a hurry for that second ball. Second and ten. Dinwiddie. It is intercepted. Tyree Sands. Caught at the 26. Sams with his second pick of the season. Dinwiddie. And the Broncos are turned away. Well, Dinwiddie was looking for Wingfield on a post corner route. And watch the cornerback sit down. Let's see if we can get a freeze right here. Right here. The cornerback, Tyree Sams, is going to come off of his responsibility. And Dinwiddie does not account for him. That's a beautiful play. Great feel shown by Tyree Sams to leave his own man-to-man -man responsibility and make the pick. And now Carr goes to work. And he goes right to Rodney Wright. Bulldogs are going to go without a huddle, it looks like. You talk about costly turnovers. You're trailing 20-7 to at Fresno State. David Carr at quarterback. And Dinwiddie having a big game, but... You have to play almost flawless at quarterback to get it done here. Inside screen. It's right. Rodney Wright. There he goes. Caught at the 32. Well, Gary Mitchell finally got him. 27 yards on the pickup. And so much of this Fresno State offense is designed to take advantage of simple throws, easy throws to get the ball in the hands of a talented wide receiver unit. And these receivers are not only great at getting open, catching the football, they're very dangerous after the catch. They can make you miss, they can break tackles. That's a rare David Carr miss intended for right. 
Uh, sometimes when you look out on that quick slant and you see a cornerback break in the middle of your throwing motion, you'll go ahead and you'll adjust and you'll throw the football away. And I wouldn't put it past David Carr in that throw to recognize the danger and go ahead and live to fight another day. He's very, very cagey in the pocket in terms of picking his spots when he wants to go ahead and throw the football away and get to the next play. There's the fake on the screen, going deep for Smith. Out of bounds, incomplete. Julius Brown on the coverage. Well, taking another look, and I think this is a proper call. Smith, oh, that's real close. Did he have control when that right foot came down? Another beautiful ball from David Carr. David Carr gave a bit of a pump fake to set that up. And you saw it. Clearly, they, they're rich. They faked the inside screen and then moved it outside to Smith. Once again, a great ball from Carr. Carr again. Short ball to Alec Greco. He is short of the first down. Sports Center in game coming at the half. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. And Rich, if there's been a right arm this fall that's been more impressive than David Carr's, it might be Kurt Schilling's. We'll check in on the NLCS <laughs> between the Diamondbacks and the Braves. Oklahoma making a change at quarterback. Is everything okay there? And we'll have hidden video, which gives new meaning to the term Matador defense, or at least to Matador kick coverage. See you in a few minutes. All right, Reese. We'll be watching. Asen Asperuhoff, the 25 year old Bulgarian who helped tie and then win the game at Colorado State. And this one is not going to get there. Pushed it wide. Fresno State 20, Boise State 7. We'll return after this. Central Valley 20 to 7. Fresno State, that's what the green V is on that helmet. Pat Hill says there's 5 million people in this valley, and we want to get them into Fresno State football. I think he has succeeded in doing that. Here's Dinwiddie on the keeper again. Dinwiddie to midfield, and Dinwiddie is out of bounds at the 46-yard line. That's been their most productive play. It's the second time they've run it, and they've picked up combined over 50 yards on those two carries. Well, it's a nice job by Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator, noticing when Dinwiddie hands the ball off that the defensive end is biting on that run action and so he's going to continue to run that naked run keeper to Dinwiddie until the defensive end stays home. Minute three left first half. Dinwiddie. His tight end Jeb puts here. Clock continues to roll. Mark it at the 41 yard line. Broncos will burn one of their three timeouts, so they'll have two left when we get back. Dan Hawkins' team trying to get on the board again. It's 20 to 7, Fresno State. Again in Fresno, number 10, Fresno State on top with 51 seconds left in this half, but Boise State is driving. Four Z in motion. A second and four. Ryan Dinwiddie threads the needle. Has his man. It's Jay Swilly to the 22 yard line. All right, you've got David Carr, number one on your Heisman list. Tomorrow, Julius Peppers goes after the guy who's number two on your list on ESPN2, Noon Eastern, North Carolina, against number 15, Clemson. Woody Dantzler and Clemson against North Carolina. College football Saturday, big day tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN2. How about the game that Woody had last week against North Carolina State? Dinwiddie. Escapes, throws, caught. That's Swilly. Clock will stop with the first down, and the Broncos move the ball down to the 10. There's a flag down back at the 30-yard line. Yeah, this should be holding. Ouch. And Dan Hawkins is thinking, we've got two drives inside Fresno State territory come up with interceptions and now once again we're threatening Dinwiddie a nice job of escaping the pocket using his feet 
pretty solid throw down the field. But watch Alan Harper sitting on the inside, number 98 on your screen. And he's going to get lassoed here. Right there with the right arm. And that was the holding call. Dinwiddie back to work. Leeds puts here nicely, makes the catch in traffic to the 18. That's still well short of the first down. And Boise State will burn another timeout. They'll have one left with 21 seconds left. We'll return to Fresno. 21 seconds left, first half. 21 seconds left, first half. Our monster.com blimp high above. Fresno proper providing you the shots. David, 21 seconds and one timeout left. Yeah, Dinwiddie wants to complete a ball beyond the stakes here. Stop the clock and save that last timeout. Keep it in his hip pocket. Dinwiddie setting. Throwing. End zone. Caught. Touchdown. Puts here the tight end. And the Broncos aren't dead yet. Ryan Dinwiddie, a well-designed play. <laughs> Extra point is good. 16 seconds left in this first half. How about Dinwiddie coming into this environment as a sophomore? And making the throws he's made here in the first half. A half roll to the right, the throw back to Putzier. And Putzier is a wide receiver. Right here, he's going to run that flag route to the outside. The good sell to the inside, sells the post move back outside. And keep in mind, he's a converted wide receiver and a good wide receiver before he moved over to that tight end position. Last two years, all-conference, put on some pounds. Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator for Boise State, thinks that he pro possibly has the best receiving tight end in the country. And Jeff's still learning the position, still learning the blocking aspects of the tight end position. But Rich, you said Boise State isn't dead yet. They're far from it. And you it's know, a six-point game. You get a real sense inside this sold-out stadium, which is such a difficult place to play, that that hit by Edwards changed the whole complexion of this game. And I think it created some resolve in the minds of the Boise State players, and there's no State's going to have to talk things over. On the return, it's Greco. And Greco is out to the 31-yard line. Ten seconds left, which is more than enough time for David Carr to do some damage. All right, coming up on SportsCenter in-game, preview of Texas and Colorado. Certainly Fresno State would like Colorado to win that one and help them out on the computers. A sooner controversy at the quarterback spot and a Bulldog Bull session. Reese Davis had to separate Rod Gilmore and Mark May. <laughs> right before our game and their discussion about Fresno State. So that certainly will be an interesting conversation when they talk about Fresno State and the BCS. It's all coming up. Sports Center in game at the half. Looks like Fresno State and David Carr are just going to take a knee here. Now the other option is to try a Hail Mary and a, maybe a field goal attempt. The Bulldogs have two timeouts, but Pat Hill's going to reel it in and head on into the locker room with a six point lead. Carr's numbers, 14 of 21. The interception popped out of his receiver's hands. And number 10, Fresno State, leads Boise State 20 to 14. Sports Center in game, Reese Davis. All of a sudden, Boise State in the last five minutes had a new spark of life. Well, I don't think people understand how good Boise State is in the passing offense. And I think Fresno State has been surprised. Without the turnovers by Boise State, this could be a tie game. The Broncos could even be leading this one without the interception. Fresno State in that dangerous offense will get the ball first in the second half. Bernard Berry and Charles Smith deep. And here we go with the second half. Smith. Not much of a, a return. He's out to the 17-yard line. ESPN game track. First half 
pictures. David Carr at times was brilliant. His one interception popped out of his receiver's hands. And that throw to Rodney Wright. The Kendall Edwards hit. He was ejected for a flagrant hit. And Boise State took the football, went right back down the field. Ryan did win he hit Jeb Putz here with 21 seconds left in the first half. And that's how Boise State climbed within six. Paris Gaines to the 22-yard line. Dan Hawkins of Boise State is well aware that the third quarter has belonged to David Carr and Fresno State this year. 63-10. You saw the hidden video of UC Davis. That's Dan Hawkins' alma mater. He was a fullback at UC Davis. Carr's throw is incomplete. He was looking for Rodney Wright. And Carr was hit. Marcus Perkis. And one way to disrupt David Carr and his accuracy in the pocket is to get pressure. And Perkis, the big defensive end, successful in beating the block to the outside. That's one thing that Boise State started to do in the second quarter. They started to create some situations where they could harass Carr and take away some of his timing. Third down. Looked like movement, no flags. And the throw is on the money to Bernard Berrien. Julius Brown on the coverage. And to be a great quarterback at any level, you have to take advantage of the gimmies. And the out routes fall in that category with a soft corner. Five-step drop. Carr keeps that back foot loaded. Delivers the ball on time. And throwing the out route on time takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. You can be a little bit less accurate if you get the ball out on time. And that's what happened on that point. Paris Gaines to the 37-yard line. Three yards on the, on the carry. Gaines with 56 yards in the first half. Now up to 62. But still, that's, that's a number that Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator for Boise State, can live with. Uh, the key coming into this game was not letting Fresno State get a running game going and allow David Carr to play action and exploit man-to-man -man covers. And I think Boise State's doing a good job. Cards throw a little high, and it's incomplete. And Gabriel Franklin, that redshirt freshman out of Hayward, California, in the East Bay, in the San Francisco Bay Area, I made the play. I really like the look of Gabriel Franklin, or the redshirt freshman. He has made some big-time plays in this football game, and you know, it is not easy for a cornerback of any age to match up with these wide receivers for Fresno State. And he has accounted for himself very well. A very nice break on that last throw from Carr. Broncos go freshman, sophomore, junior, sophomore in their defensive secondary. Carr on third down. Man open, Rodney Wright. That time he got the best of the redshirt freshmen. Well, I mentioned that Franklin was making some nice breaks on the football. The Fresno State saw that upstairs. Andy Ludwig noticed it. And they're going to go with a pump fake here. Watch the pump fake by David Carr. He sells it real well. The move outside. And Franklin bit on it. Very seasoned wide receivers. And they know how to set up cornerbacks when cornerbacks are playing aggressively. Again. That one is caught, and that's a marvelous catch by Rodney Wright. This time they were working on Julius Brown. Now, this is a tremendous catch, and that ball is not a perfect spiral. Wow. Tremendous concentration by Wright to go high and make that catch. 
as he was falling to the turf. Big numbers here early in the third quarter. He had 120 yards at Colorado State in receiving. As you saw, he's already at 135. Carr on the move. possession of the second half. Another arm fake from David Carr. Set up that touchdown. And this time, he made the pump fake on the roll to his right. And usually when you, you set up a route on the outside with the pump fake, it's on the drop back and you're stationary in the pocket. But David Carr was rolling to his right, pumped to his receiver in the flat. The route was turned up and surprise. Another accurate ball from David Carr. Fresno State will go for two. Carr on the move. In trouble. He does it again, but Carr is down. Now he's up. And they were holding their breath, all 42,000 of them, here at Bulldog Stadium. There isn't much this youngster can't do. On the money, on the touchdown to Bernard Berrien. And Berrien with the catch on another great throw. Disappointed. Number 10, Fresno State, 28. Boise State, 14. First possession of the second half in five consecutive games. The Bulldogs have put points up. And now Boise State will get the football. Their first possession. David Michael. Oof. At the 18-yard line, Dean Meza made the stop. Let's go back to that touchdown. And we talked about the arm fake by David Carr. Watch Bernard Berrien. David Carr is going to come out. Go ahead and roll it here. Now let's go ahead and freeze it right here. Berrien's going to move to the flat. And then on the arm fake, we'll get a bite right here from the defensive player. Arm fake right there. Sets it up. Berrien flies by him. The ball right on the money. And Julius Brown, number six, victimized by the Fresno State passing game. Let's see if the Broncos have an answer. Forzy hit by Vernon Fox, the safety. <laughs> Carr is obviously talented, but these Fresno State receivers are pretty darn good. Well, and, and Barry and made it a real nice play adjusting on the touchdown. It was a nice throw by Carr, nice arm fake. But to me, the two-point conversion, and hopefully we'll get another look, the two-point conversion was an unbelievable play. Dinwiddie. Caught by Billy Wingfield. Here's the 27-yard line. Here is that two-point conversion. And when I say unbelievable, I mean unbelievably tough. I mean, Carr knows how to throw the ball. He can make all the throws. He's got the mobility. But look at him sit and take a vicious shot right there from... That was Quentin Michael. A strong safety. He just cleaned up Carr on the delivery. And now Dinwiddie has to answer. Forzi on a draw, and boy, this tough little kid from Meridian, Idaho, out to the 32-yard line. Brock Forsey is one of those running backs that gives you a top effort every time he touches the football. He's a good blocker. And you know, as a quarterback, you always love to have a running back that has a great feel in the passing game. Of course, of course, he can come out of the backfield, does very well on screen type plays. And we saw it on the touchdown earlier in the first quarter, sneaking out in the flat. 
Orsi has some blocking. That's a play that Vince Lombardi would be pleased with. Now, this is the way you run the sweep. Watch the big guys moving out here to the outside and leading the way. And that's number 33, Matt Strofus, the fullback, who's looking for a piece downfield. You don't see that play run out of the eye much anymore, do you? Well, and that is that is the old student body right. When you talk about the USC, UCLA down in Los Angeles, you get some offensive line. And second and two, Forzi to the 43-yard line. And he's right on the sticks. Looks like he has the first down. Clock is ticking on College Football Saturday, and it all starts at 10.30 Eastern tomorrow morning, 7.30 Pacific. College Game Day presented by the Discover Card. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet have a home game tomorrow. They're in the studios in Bristol. <laughs> well, that's a big offensive line for Boise State. They're creating some running room, and that's so critical if Boise State's going to keep touch with Fresno State. David Michael bounces outside, and Michael is inside the 45-yard line. A resilient Boise State team. And they can present a nice mix of run and pass. And they're a lot like Fresno State in that regard. You know, Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator for Boise State, likes to set up his passing game with Dinwiddie. He says, you know, we try to get a mix, a 50-50 mix, but when we play the better teams, we go with a little more pass. But that run game is sure starting to keep the Fresno State defenders honest up front. Michael down to the 43-yard line. <laughs> Alan Harper made the stop. <laughs> One of the tough things about going up against the David Carr-led offense and an offense with the talented offensive line like Fresno State's with the wide receivers on the outside. It not only puts pressure on your defense, but it puts pressure on your offense to continue and score points. And Dinwiddie has to come down the field here and collect points. Blitz coming. Dinwiddie steps up. Got his man at the 21-yard line. The tight end, who used to be a receiver, and it's a nice combination of both Jeb Putzier. Putzier, six foot five, about 245, maybe 250. Has great speed, and he's going to find the seam against this zone defense. Watch him feel the seam, get behind the linebackers, ball thrown perfectly on time. Pretty impressive arm strength from Dinwiddie. Fanuki in motion. Forzi on a sweep. To the 19-yard line. Mark Daly and Maurice Rodriguez made the hit. Matt Hill, like last week, Colorado State would never done down 14 points a week ago, but Pat Hill concerned. And here comes the hitting. It's the hitting that is really been the trademark, as we said, of this Fresno State team. Sometimes an offense can work that aggressiveness against the Bulldog defense. Second and nine. Got his man again! Putzio is in! Touchdown, Boise State! 19 yards again from Dinwiddie. From 19 yards in. Three touchdown passes for the sophomore, Ryan Dinwiddie. And Dan Hawkins, the first-year coach at Boise State. Down by eight now. We'll kick the extra point. And how about Ryan Dinwiddie? And these aren't all easy throws. He's sitting in. He's making some difficult throws. Offensive line doing a great job of getting him time. Fresno State is number 10 in the country. They may have a Heisman Trophy winner on their team, but it hasn't worried Boise State. They're playing tough, 28-21. Yeah. yeah, 
And what was great about this route coordination, crossing action from both receivers on the left side, and then Plitziar is going to come underneath. Great job by Dinwiddie to be patient, let the receivers clear, and then underneath to Plitziar a foot race for the corner. Broncos kick it to Bernard Berrien. And Berrien is caught at the 24-yard line. Certainly, Fresno State is talking about BCS, but back in 1992, they were talking freedom ball. And Trent Dilfer led him into Los Angeles at the Big A, and they beat USC, upset him. Jim Sweeney, their head coach, called it the biggest win in Fresno State history. And they beat Larry Smith. USC 24-7. We're joined now by Trent Dilfer. Trent, obviously you and David Carr are, are close. You have to be pretty proud of the way your pupil has played so far today. Really am. Uh, kid's a, he's a special kid. And, uh, by the way, uh, I've lost a lot of weight since that last clip. <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> he's a special kid, and, and uh, they've done a great job with him here, developing him. And, and uh, you know, he's just hes so talented. He, he's, he's taken this team uh, in his hands and, and really led them. And, and uh, they developed his personality, which I think is special. Trent, what are your thoughts on, on it on the game so far? He, he's made some pretty unbelievable throws. Well, how about the last series? How about the uh, two-point conversion? Uh, his ability to throw the ball on the run and, and, and make, make throws that aren't easy uh, is just phenomenal. Uh, and it's going to take that to the next level. And hardly ever do things just work out the way you want them to. Barry with the catch. He's short of the first down. Uh, Trent, I thought you made an interesting comment two weeks ago when you said that right now David Carr is making throws that only a handful of quarterbacks in the NFL can make. Do you think that highly of his throwing ability, his ability to make all the throws? I really do. And what I mean by that, because I know as much NFL quarterbacks are mad at me right now, but I really don't <laughs> care. Um, his ability to change speeds of the ball is something that only a few people can do. He, he can throw it hard. Uh, he can throw it hard and get it up and down, which means he can, he can throw that 20-yard route, get over people, but still throw with velocity. He can throw it soft. He can do a lot of special things with the football. All right, third down and one. Let's see if he can convert this third down. And, and, and he, he can looks... run over defensive linemen. All right, well, let me ask both of you quarterbacks. What doesn't he do well? Is there an area or something that he does need to tweak to, to get him, I mean, to get him a little bit better into the next level? Trent? I don't see anything. I think he's going to be asked to do some things he hasn't been asked to do a lot here. Uh, he's going to be responsible for protections in the NFL, which he probably hasn't been at this level, but no co college quarterbacks are. Um, you know, he's going to be asked to throw the ball down the field a little bit more, but, you know, people talk about how they throw the screens, but last series he throws three balls over 30 yards and throws them perfectly. Carr steps up, throws on the run. He's got Steven Spock, the tight end. To the 44-yard line, Quentin Michael made the hit. Now, you live here in Fresno. You work out with him in the offseason. When did you know that, that he was something special? Uh, two offseasons ago, we were working out. And, uh, you know, at that point, they hadn't done much offensively. They were throwing the, the short, quick, you know, three-step game a lot, throwing the bubble screens, and I hadn't seen him do much. And we went out and threw a bunch of comebacks and deep posts, a lot of the 20 to 40-yard throws. And, uh, he, he was just phenomenal. His, his ability to, to learn things quickly and, and just deliver the ball accurately on time was phenomenal. We had a chance to sit down with David Carr, and we asked him about those off-season workouts. We asked him about his relationship with you. Trent's an amazing guy. He's a, he's a better person than a lot of people give him credit for. I mean, a lot of people don't know him. They just see him as a football player, but I know him as a person. And he's helped me out through a lot of things this year. I mean, he had a lot of success in college. And uh, he came out early, and he had the, the high draft talk and the NFL talk and all that stuff that goes along with it. On first and ten, David Carr, swing pass, Alec Greco, out to the 46-yard line. I'm glad I'm a better person people give me credit for. <laughs> You're a better quarterback than they give you credit for sometimes. Let's, I want I got to ask you about that. Mike Holmgren. You're 2-0 as a Seahawks starter, but he has said that Matt Hasselbeck is healthy. You have a bye this week, Miami next week, and Matt will be the starting quarterback. You know, Matt's going to be a great football player, and I think that's the thing people need to understand. And, and this is his football team, and, and it was made very clearly to me when, it, when I went to Seattle. I told Mike one thing. I said I'd give him the best year of my, best year of my career, and, 
And uh, that meant going in and playing two games. That means going back and sitting and, and helping the team another well do that. Rodney Wright lost the football. Boise State says they have it. The officials say it was down. Quentin Michael with the hit. We'll take a look at it. Well, Trent, in many ways, this is a breakthrough season for David Carr. And, and really, as we take a look here at the last play, ball comes out late. He was, he down. was down. But truly a breakthrough season for you a year ago. And must have been tremendously satisfying for you after some of the struggles that you had early at Tampa Bay to come through the way you did, to, to progress the way you did, and ultimately to take a team to the Super Bowl championship. Well, obviously it was very satisfying. I, I think as I look back on it, what was most rewarding about it was actually the process. Uh, uh, the victory itself it was great, and something I wouldn't trade for the world, but uh, being around such a special group of people in Baltimore and, and uh, really going through some great adversity with one another, uh, drawing close together and, and overcoming a lot of things and, and, and kind of having that, um, you know, that mentality, all that bunker mentality all year long where we felt like, felt like we had to prove something, put, uh, dig ourselves out of a hole. It really brought us close together. And I, I really believe deep down that's why we were a special football team because we, we were very close, we loved one another, and we played very hard for one another. Third down and one. Fresno State, a seven-point lead. Harris Gaines, this time he lost the football, and this time it's scooped up. Boise State has the ball. Travis Berger. Berger is knocked out of bounds. There's a flag down at the 32. The official says Berger went out at the 25. Harris Gaines was hit, coughed it up, and this time there was no question about it. Now, this flag is going to be a post-possession flag, so regardless of the blocking infraction, and I think that's what it's going to be on the return by Berger, there was a blocking infraction, looked like maybe a hold, but Boise State is going to retain possession here, and this is a big hit. Third and one, and that was LeGarry Mitchell going low, number 34, ball pops loose, and Travis Berger catches this ball cleanly in the air and almost takes it back for six. They look at Michael, number nine, leading the way. And Boise State, one score from tying this one up. Well, I, I just saw what David Carr doesn't do well. <laughs> Tackle. Yes. Well, hopefully it won't have, it won't have to very often. <laughs> this is going to be a good test for Fresno State, though. This is, you know, as a... As an alum, this is something you want to see. You want to see how they respond to this adversity. It's only going to get harder for them this year, so this will be a good test for them. Dinwiddie. That one right through the hands of his fullback, Matt Strokas. All right, well, we have, we've heaped praise on David Carr. What about Ryan Dinwiddie? Have you, have yeah. Your thoughts on this sophomore? He played pretty well. He has. I was just telling somebody that... The kid's got some moxie to him. Uh, he throws the ball uh, very accurately. He's only really made one mistake, and that was down in the red zone. Um, you know, he's, he's throwing the ball well. He had a huge drop that was intercepted um, by his tight end. He's got the ball in the seams well. You know, Fresno State's blitz zoned him a couple times, and he's been able to stand in there and deliver the ball to skinny post on time and make some big plays. I like the kid. Flags are down. Play clock has 13 seconds left on it. They may pick it up. There is no flag on the play. So, Trent, are you looking forward to the next chapter? And obviously, last two games, impressive with the Seahawks. Once again, opening some eyes. After, are you looking at, at the situation not being back with the Ravens, a new challenge and a new opportunity to, to excel even further? Yeah, I've really learned uh, just to embrace each challenge that you face. Uh, I'm looking forward to what my career has to offer, although I kind of like this gig up here. This is kind of fun. <laughs> I might look into this. I'm starting to get uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, he's, a little bit, he's a little bit too good. I don't have enough hair to do this. <laughs> Genuity on a screen. Forzy the catch. 35. Forzy is down to the 27, and he's got a first down. Dan Hawkins, the Boise State coach, told us today if we play our game and don't make a lot of mistakes, we can play with the number 10 team in the country. Well, they've had a great game plan, and they've executed it well in the passing department. Now, Dinwiddie has such a nice feel on the screen passes, the swing passes, of drawing those defenders to him in the pocket and dealing the ball off, and Forsey 
a very special running back catching the ball out of the backfield. He's proven that tonight. Borzee to the 15, and the little guy out of Meridian, Idaho, continues to stick his nose in it. That's an 11-yard pickup. He's 5'11", 198. He runs a lot heavier than that. Well, he does run heavy, and that's a great way to, to characterize him, Rich. He doesn't have the speed to take away angles on defensive backs, and, and, and he's not a home run threat, but he squares the shoulder pads, and if you give him running room, he's going to pack some punch. You see, by the way, he took on a safety and a cornerback right there. First and 10 from the 15. The little man, David Michael, with the carry. To the nine-yard line. And David Michael, Daly made the hit. And David Michael does give you that speed element. He's the tailback. He's a nice change of pace when they bring him in for Forsey. And if he does get a crease, he's the type of guy who can take it to the end zone on it. Michael. To the eight. Mark Daly made the stop. This will bring up third down. And about three. Often I get a chance to ask one quarterback this question. Now that I've got two, what's your play call here, gentlemen, both of you, on third down and a long three? I have to defer to the Super Bowl champion first. I'll go, I'll go off the board for 100. I, I, I'd move the pocket. I'm definitely going to throw it. I think, you know, you're in the middle of the field, so you can move the pocket either way. I uh, try to break and take. Fresno State's having a hard time containing both the quarterback and the running backs tonight. If you can break and take, you can buy yourself some time to make a play. On third down, Dinwiddie, little screen. Nice catch by Swilly. He steps inside the five, and he's got the first down. You know, it's amazing what you can get away with in college football with these linemen being able to get downfield. You know, you watch this drive. They've had two big plays on screens, and they're slow developing, but you get those big guys down and knocking the linebackers and secondary people around and make some plays. When you look at the replay here, Trent, a great job slipping to the left there. A nice move by Swilly. Looked like... Fresno State had him stop for a loss. Nice job of running, and he breaks inside the five-yard line, first and goal. And we have ourselves a game here, Rich. Forzy to the three. 120 left, third quarter. Dan Hawkins was an assistant to Dirk Cutter the last couple of seasons. He was the head coach at small Willamette University in Salem, Oregon. Took over this year. And he's got his Boise State Broncos on the doorstep, trailing the number 10 team in the country by seven. Second and goal. Option. Forzy. State. Whoa! Once again, Fresno State loses contain. That's what happens when you lose contain. You get a lot of your backs to run downhill. That stuff happens. And that's a heck of a play call to go ahead and spring an option play on him. And a nice job by Dinwiddie coming out, attacking the defensive end. His job as a quarterback is to make that defensive end commit. He brings the defensive end and then dishes the Ball off the bottom of the deck. Great job by Forsey over the top. Kick is up and good, and Boise State is tied Fresno State. A thank you to Trent Dilfer down here hey, on a bye week. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Trent. Although I wouldn't mind saying it for I could have left this kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give Nori the headset now. Up, up, and away goes Brock Forsey. Adjust your set. Boise State 28, number 10 Fresno State 28. A Superman effort by Brock Forsey, the junior out of Meridian, Idaho. And a line drive kick that was caught at the 48 yard line. Fresno State has great field position. Off the catch by Todd Garcia. All right, let's take a look at the touchdown. Now you mentioned a Superman effort by Brock Forsey. 
Let's go ahead and freeze it right here. Watch Devin Banks. Devon Banks is going to try to take him low. The mistake, he's going to lower his helmet, and Forsey goes over the top. Now, what a drive by Forsey, both running the football and catching the ball out of the backfield. Number 36 was a force on that drive. And we got ourselves a tie ball game. David Carr, over the middle, it's out of the hands of Alec Greco. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan. Alex? As it has gotten very quiet down here along the sidelines, these players are just shocked. Uh, J.D. Williams, the secondary coach, came out and talked to his secondary unit, especially to uh, Banks down here, and he's very calm. He just told them, you guys, we don't need to make the big plays. You just have to do your job. Stay on your job, and we can win this game. Rich? Alex, it seems like an, the life in this stadium just dissipated after that late first half hit by Kendall Edwards. I want to get your reaction to what happened on the sideline in that sequence. That one is dropped. Mm -hmm. You know what, Rich, it's interesting. I talked to Kendall Edwards actually after the half. He said it was an accident, that he was looking at the ball, and as he kind of looked out, he saw Gilligan in front of him and accidentally hit him. He says he doesn't want to be known as a player who hits guys like that and takes cheap shots. But it did really change the momentum. The crowd is just silent. The players are down on their knees, kind of holding their breath here. They definitely did not expect this. Well, if he doesn't want to be known as a player that does it, he better stop because he's done it twice. And after the Oregon State incident, you're not going to get the benefit of the doubt. And if you ask me, it looked a little bit more on the intentional side. Don't know for sure, but he can't do that twice in a season. Third down and ten. The throw is on the money to Bernard Berrien. Let's go back to the Oregon State game. The game that you and I did here in Fresno. Terrell Roberts is the return man. It broke his left wrist, and he missed a month. Second quarter of this game. Tim Gilligan was hit. He has not returned. And this, this hit was twice as violent, if you can imagine that, than the Terrell Roberts hit. hit. And, and a very dangerous one. And that is the only situation in college football where a player is totally and 100% vulnerable he has no protection whatsoever you've got to do whatever you can to make sure he's protected that could have been a disaster rich that could have been a tragedy right there and to the whack officials credit he was ejected from the game three quarters have expired what a story we have in fresno tonight the number 10 team is tied with boise state back after this boise state is giving them all they can handle you saw that Fresno State has dominated the third quarter of their games, while Boise State has dominated the fourth quarter of their games. But of course, they haven't faced David Carr yet. Paris Gaines. Flag is down at the 37. Gaines is down to the 33. Our ESPN game trap will tell you the story of this game. David Carr has been marvelous. Throwing it long, throwing it deep, throwing it on the money. Bernard Berrien for a score here in the second half. But a big turnover. Travis Berger raced down the sideline with this one. And it set up this. Brock Forsey has been everywhere tonight. The tough little running back goes up and over and in. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. The Dow remains two. Well, Rich, there are a couple keys, definite keys, that both coaching staffs talked about coming into the football game. Number one, for Boise State to have a shot, they had to stop the running game of Fresno State, stop Paris Gaines. I think they've kept them under control. Number two, they had to protect Dinwiddie. And number three, and maybe most importantly, they needed some breaks in the turnover and penalty department. All that has happened, and that's why we have a tie score. The throw by Carr to Rodney Wright to the 32-yard line. He's short of the first down. It'll bring up third down and about three. 14 yards on the pickup. Five-step drop. Another arm fake. And David Carr with another accurate, accurately thrown ball. He gets some nice route running from these wide receivers. They got a nice feel for sitting down against the zone and those little gaps, those little voids in the defense. This is a big play right here, Rich. Carr on the move. Throw is caught. It's Berrien right on the sticks. Forward progress. 
I think he has it. Four-yard pickup is a first down. Yeah, they gave it to him, and that was the right spot. Varian made sure that he had enough depth on that route. And I'll tell you what, Gabriel Franklin was breaking on that football in the hurry out, in a hurry out in the flat. Watch number 16. Franklin thinking he might have had a pick right there, but the arm strength, the car, got the ball there in a hurry. Gaines right up the gut. Nine-yard pickup. Quentin Michael made the stop. Um, there's a lot of pressure as an opposing team against this Fresno State offense, and defensively and offensively. Dan Hawkins knows that. But after the Broncos tied this game at 28, I think that pressure has shifted back to Fresno State. The BCS berth on the line, Pat Hill looking for a perfect season, and now the onus is on Fresno State to come up with the score. Dane's trying to come up with the first down. He's very close. Andy Avalos made the stop. Pat Hill was an assistant under Jim Sweeney here at Fresno State, and the NFL came calling. He spent five years with the Cleveland Browns, and then when they moved, a year with the Baltimore Ravens. Came back as the head coach. And in his fifth year, he has done a wonderful job. Third and short. Carr, little bootleg, he's in trouble. The 28-yard line. Gabriel Franklin with the sack. Now Boise State brings the corner blitz, but Bobby Hammer, number 98, arrives first. Watch the top of your screen. And actually, that was Ryan Nelson, the junior defensive end, who made the play. And what a play it was. Escaping the block to the outside. And this creates about a 45-yard. Asen Asperuha. He missed a 44-yarder. This is from 45. He's 15 of 19 on the season. Missed it! Boise State holds. This is getting interesting in Fresno. Stick with us. Coaching staff of Boise State. Uh, Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator right here, with a great stop against Fresno State. Now Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator. What a job he's done calling this game out of the box for Boise State. An offensive game plan that has really been exceptional, especially with the passing game and Dinwiddie in the pocket. Here's Forzy out to the 32-yard line. The fact that Dinwiddie is completing 63% of his passes is pretty impressive. He leads the WAC in, in pass rating. He's the highest-rated passer in the conference. And it's no, it should be no surprise, Chris Peterson was an outstanding quarterback at UC Davis. He owns the Division II completion percentage record. Peterson completed 69% of his passes. He was a teammate of head coach Dan Hawkins at UC Davis. Hawkins left in 84, Peterson in 86. And down goes Forzy. Start your football day tomorrow morning on ESPN, noon Eastern, in the Big Ten. Anthony Davis and the Badgers against Kirk Kittner in Illinois. College football Saturday, noon Eastern on ESPN. Tied at 28, Boise State, number 10, Fresno State. Third and eight, Dinwiddie with time. And complete. Lou Fanuki with the catch. Who are these guys, these Boise State Broncos? Lou Fanuki, the junior, 
out of Claremont, California. Well, Dinwiddie split two wide receivers out to his right side, a couple of curl routes, and the inside receiver is Fanuki. Once again, Dinwiddie moving the pocket to his right, and how about that for a throw? You talk about on the money. Forzy. Ran out of gas at the 46-yard line, and that's not a good thing when Nick Burley is chasing you. Uh, he's a formidable force, and you know, not many quarterbacks have to look at defensive ends with that kind of speed and, and upfield ability at the defensive end position. I think it's really interesting, Rich, to watch both offensive coordinators in this game stubbornly stick with the run. They've been very very sure about staying with the run to set up the pack. Dinwiddie on the quick screen. It's Billy Wingfield right at the sticks. He's out at the 45. It looks like a first down for Boise State. Tyree Sands on the stop. Dinwiddie has nice tools and recognition wingfield's just going to run he's got a soft corner he's going to step up on the hitch and go ahead and get the ball out into his hands quickly let him run with it. nice job of picking up yards after the catch and moving the chain blitz coming did when he's in trouble and he goes down and Justin Johnson. Fresno State starting to realize that Dinwiddie's getting a little too comfortable in the pocket. Dinwiddie's starting to be able to sit and count the house, so what do they do? They bring Fox on a strong safety blitz. And Dinwiddie has to recognize it because that's an unblocked defender. And a bit of a mix-up there. Dinwiddie has to see that blitz and get the ball out quickly. A long second and 17. Another blitz coming. He got rid of it this time. Ryan Morris put the pressure on. And Ryan Morris made the difference. Sophomore defensive end. Then what he was trying to set up the screen pass to the outside. Two big plays consecutively for Fresno State getting penetration and taking away Dinwiddie's time. Another blitz. Incomplete. Jay Swilly and Billy Wingfield both in on the pattern. And Dinwiddie overthrew Swilly. I'll tell you what, in a third and long situation, this is what you like to see. Wingfield clearing out. That ball was not meant for Wingfield. Swilly was running the underneath route on the crossing pattern. And Dinwiddie had it. Dinwiddie hooks up with Swilly. Willie picks up the first down. Dangerous return man in Berrien. He's taken one back 96 yards this year. That was almost a halo violation there. As the ball went through the end zone, it comes out to the 20-yard line. We are tied in Fresno. Number 10, Fresno State 28, Boise State 28. Immediately following college football here on ESPN. Linda Cohn and John Anderson will bring you Sports Center. Braves and Diamondbacks, Game 3. A closer look at David Carr. Shaq in action. First and 10, Fresno State. On the reverse, Rodney Wright is hit hard by a very good safety in Quentin Michael. All right, David Norrie, take us through the night of David Carr, will you? Well, David Carr is the complete package in terms of all the throws he can make. And it's not only out of the pocket. He throws exceptionally well on the move. Gets a nice catch from Berrien. How about the giddy up he puts on the ball there? Gets another great catch. And then the up route by Berrien, perfectly thrown ball for six. 
On second down and eight, car to the sidelines. That one is incomplete. Some revenge from the freshman, Gabriel Franklin. You can't ask a cornerback to play much better than this. He's man-to-man -man on the nose of Barry. There's some hands right there, and, but not quite enough contact to draw the flag. Fresno State hasn't faced many third downs and nine tonight. Over 300 for the fifth time. Carr with a blitz on the way. Drop the ball. It's loose. Did the Broncos get it? Nope, they didn't. It was out of bounds. Fresno State will have to punt the football. But again, the Broncos getting pressure on Carr. And, and when you talk about pressure, how about the tightness? It's starting to develop here. Seven and a half minutes to go. Tie game. Fresno State. They never figured to be in a dogfight. There's the strip. Quentin Michael, number nine, was the one who came in, shook oh. that ball loose. Wow. And Franklin almost made the pickup, number 16, the young redshirt freshman. Fresno State's going to have to punt it away, and Dinwiddie's going to have some pretty nice field position to work with. Simpson almost blocked. David Michael to the 46-yard line. Not many people gave Boise State a chance in this one, and with 7.22 left, they are tied with the number 10 team in the country. Dr. Com Blimp is watching this one. Boise State and number 10 Fresno State. Rich Waltz, David Norrie, Alex Flanagan. Bulldog Stadium is sold out, but it's very quiet right now. 42,000 are watching and stunned. This young coach, Dan Hawkins, has brought his Boise State Broncos to town, and they are tied with the number 10 team with 7.22 left. On first down, Dinwiddie over the middle. It is caught. That's Lilly. He's down. He's fired. He scores. Touchdown, Boise State. 54 yards. Wow. Willie from Ryan Tinwitty. My goodness. And Boise State has their first lead since the first quarter. And you can hear a pin drop in what is usually a madhouse of a stadium. The Broncos lead Fresno State by seven. Now this is a skinny post. Let's go ahead and run it. A skinny post to Swilly. The ball is on time and look at the collision. That was Bryce McGill number five. And a big hit. But Swilly's able to bounce off and make the play. Watch number five, Bryce McGill. Goes low. Swilly keeps his feet. And Boise State on the verge of testing this Fresno State team's DCS aspirations. I mean, Ryan Dinwiddie sat in the pocket and delivered an absolute strike and really a courageous play by Swilly to make that catch in between two defenders, take the hit by a pretty big hitting safety. And people around the WAC say that Bryce McGill is probably the best hitter out of the secondary in this conference, and Swilly made a beautiful play. High kick. And it's Charles Smith to the 28-yard line. Coming up immediately following this ball game, Sports Center. And Decone John Anderson will bring you up to speed on everything that's happened in LCS.
Big night here in Fresno. We've seen David Carr make some tremendous plays. That's been documented. But Ryan Dinwiddie has stepped into the spotlight tonight as well. Well, David Carr is always going to give you some great throws and going to really bowl you over with his ability. But Dinwiddie came into the game as the number four passer in the country, and he's having the better game right now. Reverse to Smith. Flag goes down. As Quentin Michael may have had a face mask. It was in front of Pat Hill. Holding on the offense, face mask on the defense. They will cancel, the down will be one. So it's first and 10. Bulldogs awfully lucky to get that five-yard face mask at the end of the play. Well, David Carr would have really been in a hole down seven points to start this drive. And he's in the same position right now that he was in a week ago up at Fort Collins. Quick throw. And the catch by Rodney Wright. Gabriel Franklin made the stop. Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator of Boise State, said, as long as we can keep David Carr in front of us, we have a chance in this game. Now, David Carr, no stranger to coming from behind. You just go back to the Wisconsin game at Madison last week against Colorado State. It was tight with Oregon State, seven-point lead. What, Fresno State wasn't trailing against the Beavers, but that was a tight one here. Carr can perform under pressure. Up for Rodney Wright, who makes the catch. Franklin on the coverage, but... Quite honestly, I don't know how you defend that. Well, and that's, that's what's so dangerous about a quarterback that can throw the fade route. You can have a quarterback crawling all over the wide receiver, but the wide receiver has the advantage. He can look back for the football and look at the ball placement by David Carr. On the fade route, you want to lead the wide receiver to the outside, away from the cornerback. That's a nice catch, but you cannot throw a fade ball any better. Rodney Wright is having a big night. 177 yards. Carr, a little pump, going deep, right again. This one is broken up by Julius Brown. Intended 6.08 left in this one. Boise State with the number 10 team on the ropes right now. Sports Center is coming up immediately following here on ESPN. How about the cornerback play by Julius Brown, number six, and also Gabe Franklin, number 16. Well, Brown, Brown certainly, this is a big game for him. He grew up in Stockton. And there's Gabriel Franklin. He grew up in Hayward. You know a lot of these guys have family here in Fresno, these Boise players. But a freshman and a sophomore matching up against these wideouts. Inside screen. And there's Wright. A gain of only two. Third down. Clock running. When, when Boise State defensive coaches watch the game film tomorrow and on Monday, I think they're going to realize that Dave Franklin is even more special than they originally thought. He has been wonderful matching up with these wideouts on the outside. And that was Bob Gregory again, the defensive coordinator for Boise State, calling the city. Third down for Carr. That one is broken up. Julius Brown, the sophomore. Fourth down and eight. Julius Brown, he's taught to read the eyes of the quarterback. And this time he's going to check the throw. He's a half step away from making a break on that ball and taking it back and making this maybe a 14-point game. And Fresno State not in a position here on fourth and eight to go for it. Too much time. 525, all three timeouts. There's a world of time left in this one, but I know Pat Hill not real excited about punting the ball back to Ryan Didwitty. 
Quentin Michael is deep for Boise State. Michael down to a knee at the 12 yard line. Boise State has the football. Pat Hill wants it back. His number 10 Bulldogs are in some trouble in Fresno. Amongst the 42,000 here in Fresno, there are some Boise State fans. <laughs> now that is original. Sports Center is coming up. Bronco ball. They're on 13. Dinwiddie. Down he goes. Clarence Denning. The Fresno State down seven points. Is going to have to do some things to get the ball back. And Clarence Denning, number 93, arrives first. Grant Harrington, the big defensive nose tackle coming in late to finish things off and Ryan Dinwiddie has been too comfortable in the pocket here in the second half and you can't help but think Dan Brown defensive coordinator for Fresno State is going to bring some more heat oh he fell down and I think he was down that was very close to a safety Dinwiddie went to a knee at the one yard line Fresno State changing things up, bringing voices. They're tired of seeing Ryan Dinwiddie. And Ryan Dinwiddie got caught up moving away from center. He got his legs tangled with the offensive line. And Boise State very fortunate to get the football back. Really for the first time since late in the second quarter, this crowd is a factor. Boise State has taken them out of the ball game. And Dinwiddie's going to call a timeout and head to the sidelines and talk it over with his head coach, Stan Hawkins. ABC College football tomorrow. A full slate of games. Live at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Stanford up to Autzen Stadium to take on the number five Ducks. Number 17, Colorado against number eight, Texas. That's going to be a great matchup and a lot of... Fresno State fans will watch that one if they win this game. North Carolina State versus number 25, Georgia Tech. Penn State against number 20, Northwestern. Check your local listings or ESPN.com. Keyword, ABC Sports. David Norrie, we all got caught. I think everyone is guilty of this. Talking about David Carr, talking about the BCS, talking about margin of victory. How much do they have to beat Boise State by? And we all missed it. Well, I, I think that people on the West Coast are familiar with Boise State football. And they know that this offense has been performing for quite some time at a very high level of efficiency. And Dinwiddie, I mean, he comes into this game the number four passer in the country. And this Boise State team went on the road, played South Carolina. They played Washington State. They played at Rice, a team that's only lost one game. And I think that fans of college football and maybe this crowd here in Fresno are surprised but the defense for Fresno State is surprised as well. Dinwiddie his offensive line Forsey, they've all been very good and the secret here for Dinwiddie is to not turn the ball over punt the ball away and take your chances against Carr he's going to throw it, oh he got him he throws it is he down in the end zone? Yes it's a safety Dinwiddie thought he got rid of it. Now Burley forced the early pressure. Bryce McGill, number five, coming on the blitz. Take a look right here at Burley. He's going to come in almost untouched. Forsey trying to get a piece of him, and I think this is a pretty good play. Look at, I don't think that should have been called a safety. All right, watch the right knee. Let's see for the release. That's the question. Oh, we didn't get a chance to see it there. Well, the ref definitely called him down. Rich Collin called him down in the end zone, and let's see if we can get another look. I, 
you know, Rich Cullen called him down, and the umpire called him down as well. Well, grounding in the end zone is an automatic safety, but a great job by Dinwiddie to backhand that football out near Putzier, his tight end. You can see Putzier on the left side. Knee down. Dinwiddie escapes too late. That's a great, That's a great call by Rich Cullen, working with the umpire in tandem. Two points, and now Carr gets an opportunity to take the lead, not just tie up this football game. A free kick. They choose to punt it. Smith. Run out of bounds. Last week, 27 seconds left. Colorado State up by three, and David Carr took over. Uh, dropped off a little middle screen to Paris Gaines. Great job by Gaines to get out of bounds. 17 seconds left. Carr escapes the pocket to the right. What a throw to Rodney Wright going out of bounds. And then he audibles against a free safety blitz, gets it to right. Asparuov, 48-yarder to save the BCS year possibilities. They went on to win that game in overtime, and David Carr, 3.53 to go. He's got to be the hero again. Paris Gaines. Paris Gaines to the 48-yard line. Five-yard pickup. Chris Foster, the Gary Mitchell, made the stop for Boise State. With under four minutes to go, the play calling for Fresno State has to assume that this is their last possession. Got a full complement of timeouts, all three timeouts. Don't try to get it all at once. And we're in four down status, I think, for David Carr. Carr scrambling, out of trouble. Steps out of bounds with the first down. Can you imagine being a defensive coordinator, having to defense David Carr and his throwing ability? The talent at wide receiver, the big offensive line, and then look at number eight, picking up yards with his feet. We talked about him running a 4 6 7 40. Has a great feel when to escape the pocket. Nice play by David Carr. Carr's throw is batted down. Second down and 10. There's such a nice feel, and that all good quarterbacks have a clock in the back of their head, and Dan Hawkins. Knows it's nail biting time. But all great quarterbacks have a feel on that clock in the back of their head. And when it strikes zero, it's time to exit the pocket. And David Carr not only has that clock, he has the quickness with his feet to escape pass rushers and turn negative plays into positive ones. Carr again. Throws it. Deflected and incomplete. Julius Brown. Almost made, well, he made a great play, but he almost made a game-saving play. And Julius Brown is going to break on this football, and he's thinking interception all the way. Now watch him try to get that foot and bounce. Oh! Not quite. I mean, he makes a great break, the deflection, and watch him try to keep that left foot in bounds. Just couldn't quite keep the left foot down. And the referees... Officials all over that one. They have had a good game tonight. Carr. Throwing. And it's caught at the 34-yard line for a first down by Charles Smith. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan, an update on Tim Gilligan. Tim Gilligan has been taken to the emergency room here in Fresno State. He has a throat contusion. They've taken him there just as a precautionary measure, but if it's not treated, it could be something that be, could be kind of serious. Amazingly, he had that exact same injury happen to him against Tulsa last week. Rich? Thanks, Alex. Gilligan, of course, was hit on the punt return by Kendall Edwards, who was ejected from the game in the first half. Car back to work on first and ten. Pump fake, out of the pocket, looking to the 25, and he's out of bounds. Back-to-back -back plays by David Carr that underscore his value as quarterback for Fresno State. I mean the. The throw two plays back on the on his 
move to the right, escaping the pocket to the right, throwing back against the grain to pick up the first down, then another run. Two big runs on this drive. Keep Fresno State's hopes alive. Paris Gaines to the 20. If you're Boise State, do you think about using a timeout right now? Not quite, because you're at 2 minutes, 30 seconds, clock running. If you start getting the feel that Fresno State is in scoring position, inside the 10, inside the 5, then you might want to use your timeouts just in case. Now you always figure, or you want to figure that your defense is going to come up with a stop, but just in case you want to leave time on the clock for Ryan Dinwiddie. A little bit too early right now. Carr, the fade, Berrien, it is broken up! Julius Brown again! Defended by Julius Brown, number six. It's Barian has excellent speed, and Brown's going to close, but watch him get his eyes back to the football. As a cornerback, if you can play tight and get your eyes back to the football, you're going to make plays. And that was a beautiful play by Brown to break that up and almost come up with an interception. Austin and Melody, David's wife, his 17-month-old son. Watching Dan work the two-minute drill for the second consecutive week. Third and eight. Inside screen is broken up, and it's fourth down now for the Bulldogs. Quinton Michael. Pat Hill wants a timeout. He wants to talk about it. David Carr on his way to the sidelines. Boise State up by five back after this. And team in the country, Fresno State. 35-30. Pat Hill burned a timeout to get this play in. David Norris? I didn't like it, especially with David Carr, a senior. We're talking about him as the best quarterback in the country. I don't think you need to talk about the fourth down play because even if you fail to pick up the first down, and this is an important play, maybe the play of the game, still you have three timeouts. You stop Boise State's offense, you're going to have at least a, a buck 40 left, minute 40 on the clock to work with at when you get the ball back. Fourth and eight. There's a flag down right now. This might be a substitution penalty. Boise State. Substitution infraction. There's 12 men at the defense. Five-yard penalty down is still four. Ooh. That's not an easy one to handle on the Monday lunch press conference for Dan Hawkins. You're change, coming out of a timeout. Change the play call? Absolutely. Absolutely you change the play call. And Fresno State is going to burn another timeout. Wow. Now, the first timeout, a bit of a question there. I don't like it. Second timeout, now if you don't pick up the first down, you're really going to be short on time if you have a chance to get the ball back. It's a big if. I love Denny's triple play breakfast. David, essentially this means if they stop him on... Welcome back to Fresno. 35-30, Boise State on top of the number 10 team. David Norrie, essentially this means if Fresno State doesn't make this fourth down, Boise State can take a knee and run the clock out. Not exactly. If you, if you have a timeout left, you got to figure 30 seconds for each play that the opposing offense has for, for no timeout in your possession. For instance, one timeout left, the first and second down would burn 30 seconds. So you'd probably be left with about 45 seconds with one timeout. There would still be time on the clock. Here's the fourth and three. The throw is deflected and caught right on the steps. First down, Fresno State. Charles Smith. David Carr giving thanks to a higher source because he knows this was as about as lucky as you could get. That ball was deflected by Marcus Perkis, the defensive end, dropping back in a zone blitz situation. And miraculously, that throw got through. Amazing. First and ten. Games. To the seventh. 
timeout for Boise State? Now you got to start thinking about using your timeouts, especially in a first and goal situation. You want to leave as much time as you can on the clock if you're Dan Hawkins. Now you have two timeouts, so not a big problem letting the clock roll here after the first down play. If this isn't an incomplete pass, if this ball doesn't go out of bounds or it's not a touchdown, then you use the timeout immediately. Carr into the end zone. Incomplete. It stops the clock. Rodney Wright, the intended receiver. And now all of a sudden you save an extra timeout for your offensive possession if you're Boise State. That is if Fresno State goes ahead and scores here. And this is obviously four down territory for David Carr. Third down and seven. The season on the line for Fresno. Gaines straight ahead to the five. He's short of the first down. Fresno's going to have to burn their last time out. Well, I don't think they'll have to burn their time out necessarily, but it doesn't matter. They can use it at any time. If Boise State gets the ball back now with less than a minute to go, they can go to a knee and the game would be over. All right. That's if Boise State can make the stop. And against David Carr and this potent offense, that's a big if. Sports Center is coming up next. High drama in Fresno tonight. Boise State decided underdogs against the number 10 team in the country, Heisman Trophy candidate David Carr, who's thrown for 345, who has thrilled this sellout crowd of 42,000 tonight. But the Boise State Broncos came roaring back. They lead this game by five. Dan Hawkins, the head coach for Boise State, a nice utilization of his timeout. He knows that even if Fresno State scores here, Dinwiddie's going to have some time. Boise State has two timeouts left. The Bulldogs are out of timeouts. Yeah, I, have to, I have to check that. That was a Fresno State timeout. So I have to go ahead and correct myself. Boise State saves another timeout for the drive if they need it. If they have to come back down the field, now they have two timeouts instead of one. Fresno State can get a first down inside the one. Four and four. came through the Cinderella season of Pat Hill may have come to an end well Sasser is gonna come on the blitz Michael a strong safety blitz from the right side and Sasser down low makes a recovery and the slipper has been shattered and what a win for Dan Hawkins to come into Fresno State, a sellout. The Bulldogs have the third longest consecutive game winning streak at home in the country. 17 games. Only Oregon and Nebraska have longer winning streaks at home. Flags down. And Dan Hawkins right now talking to the official. Now the Bulldogs used their last time out on that fourth down situation, and now it's just a matter of going to a knee for two snaps, and the upset is complete. What a game, and what a game plan executed by this Boise State offense, and the defense was really up to the task in the second half. They have picked up the flag. Fresno State cannot stop the clock. Dinwiddie to a knee. Dan Hawkins in his first year has come to Fresno. He's faced one of the most dangerous weapons in all of college football in David Carr. 
Carr, who pulled the miracle out last week at Colorado State. Who would have thought it would, would have even come to this tonight? Well, David Carr in the second half was taken out of his rhythm. And 20 points at halftime for this Fresno State offensive team. Only eight points to show in the second half. The touchdown, the two-point conversion. And David Carr has always played her heroically. But you got to give a lot of credit to Bob Gregory, the defensive coordinator for Boise State. His game plan in the second half especially, I mean, unbelievable for this Boise State team to come in. Not a lot of talent defensively, not a lot of returning starters. And to pull off this upset, to play that well on defense in the second half is exceptional. And Ryan Dinwiddie, a quarterback. And not many people had heard of Ryan Dinwiddie before this game, but he's going to be the talk of the town in Boise tomorrow. Anthony. Not many people have heard of Dan Hawkins. Not many people consider Boise State to have a chance. Boise State has upset the number... 10 team in the country. Let's go down. A 35-30 final. Ryan Dinwiddie and the Broncos. The huge upset. They beat the number 10 team in the country 35 to 30. Aerial coverage provided by the Monster.com blimp. Coming up, it's Sports Center. For more on this game, tune into ESPN News. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Alex Flanagan and David Nori, I'm Rich Waltz. We'll have more coverage on ESPN News. It's over for Fresno State, Boise State with the upset.